once we have a disease, we have to find out in order to recover from it, we have to know the exact nature of the disease. And, and in my case, you know, I, I never could, I had a hard time because many years I, I, I didn't know what my problem was and finally I come to the conclusion it was drinking. You know what I mean? After about 14 years of drinking, I said, I don't believe you can drink. You know? <laughs> It was the only thing I worked at and got worse. You know, you the practice makes perfect. You know, but practice in this thing may got worse. And after about 13 or 14 years, I said, I don't believe you can drink. So then I decided to quit. You know, I found out I was just as bad at quitting as I was at drinking, you know. <laughs> so <clears throat> he said that these, this disease is a twofold illness. He says we have a physical allergy to alcohol and a mental obsession of the mind and a physical allergy. These two things coupled together make us powerless over alcohol. For many, many years the medical people tried to, to treat the alcoholic. They sent the doctor, to, uh, they sent a lot of drunks to the medical doctors many years ago and they said those doctors killed a lot of drunks, beating them on the knees with little rubber hammers. You know. <laughs> and they said, well, I don't know. I can't see no problem here. He was just looking at one way. See me? He saw nothing medically wrong. And then they sent him to the psychiatrist, and he asked the psychiatrist, asked him a lot of dumb questions. He gave him a lot of dumb answers. <laughs> and he could not see. He looked at it just as a mental problem. But Dr. Silkworth was able to step back and look at, look at and see the picture. He said, I believe it is half and half. He says, I believe, and he begins to talk about the physical allergy to alcohol. You know, and he uses that word, and there's another word that transmits ideas. What is an allergy? You know, I had a, I had a lot of, you know, I could understand the word, but I really didn't convey, you know, how was I allergic to alcohol? No, I didn't even know what it was. I, you know, we say an allergy is an abnormal reaction to a food or chemical substance. We are, we have an abnormal reaction to, to to alcohol. Now it's pretty hard, you know. If you're an alcoholic and you have been for quite a few years or three or four years, it don't take long. You get kind of used to that. No, if you've been an alcoholic for quite a few years, or if you've been an alcoholic since you first started drinking, it is very difficult for you to understand that you're an abnormal drinker. See, we abnormal drinkers have been drinking abnormally for so long, and we've been drinking with some other abnormal drinkers, so abnormal is normal to us. <laughs> how do you know you're abnormal? Or how much you drink? Oh, about like everybody else. Boy, I'm sure glad it... <laughs> oh, I'm sure glad everybody else didn't drink like me. <laughs> but... But, so we have to really to understand how you're an abnormal drinker, you have to first understand what is a normal drinker. I never looked at that. You know, they say normal, normal so-called social drinkers or whatever we want to call those people. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they take a drink of alcohol, and alcohol is a, a toxic drug. It is. A, it, is a, it actually can be poison to the system if you put enough into the system. So it's a poison. Now our bodies, uh, we, have, we, are, uh, we are marvelous mechanisms, mentally and physically. We're God's greatest creation. There's nothing on the earth like this human body that we all have, the mind and the body that we have. Now, once anything goes into the system, our bodies, our body has a unique way of, of, uh, of immediately diagnosing what it is we put in. And then it, it, and it reacts uh, chemically and produces certain enzymes or chemistries to handle whatever. We put. If we put in a piece of steak, and it says steak, right? And if we put in a, some sweet potatoes, it says sweet potatoes. You know, you can't fool the body. You can't put in sweet potatoes. You know it's sweet potatoes. <laughs> whatever we put in, our body knows exactly what it is, and it signals certain organs in the body uniquely to act to whatever it was we put in it. Now, and the average, uh, when the social drinker, he puts alcohol into his system, it's a poison. His body recognizes it as a toxic poison. And he has certain chemistries and certain, he has a certain reaction to it. 
First thing they say to a normal social drink, it makes him dizzy. One drink. <laughs> One or two, he gets kind of dizzy. Um, and that's a, that's a normal reaction to a drug like alcohol. And it says that uh, it makes him so nauseous. A couple of drinks in his system, he gets kind of nauseous at the stomach. And, he gets, and after a while, he gets a sense of being out of control. Now, that's a normal reaction to alcohol. That's what happens when a normal social drinker takes a drink. Now, that didn't happen to me. When I took a drink, I didn't get dizzy. And I didn't get nauseous. If I did, I put another one down there on top of it real quick in this stage. You know. <laughs> and I didn't get a sense of being out of control. I got a sense of being in control. But the main thing that separates me, and immediately I wanted another drink. And I said, that is an abnormal reaction to alcohol. Dr. Silkworth said the craving of alcohol is a manifestation of the allergy and never occurs in the average temperate drinker. Normal people do not crave alcohol. You know, I couldn't, I never figured that out about those social drinkers. Every time they drink, they get all they want. And I drank for 16 years, and I never remember one time saying, I got enough that night. I never did get enough. <laughs> so my reaction uh, is different than other people. And we look at this, you know, he talks about the allergy to alcohol. He said there are many different types of alcoholics. You know, he talks about the, in the book the five types of alcohol, the psychopaths, and we won this. And all these people, if we all took a drink, we always try to compare ourselves with other people. Oh, am I alcoholic? Well, you hear somebody, well, he, went, he got three DWIs. I didn't get but two. I don't believe I'm alcoholic. <laughs> Come here. She's been married six times, you know. She's an alcoholic. I ain't been I just made four, so I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> and we go around comparing. This is not the way we do this. We study our the doctor's opinion. The doctor's opinion says there are many different types of people. You know, if we all took a drink tonight, God forbid that we do in this place, you know. <laughs> Boy, I just couldn't imagine that. But if we t everybody took a drink tonight in here, well, you know, it would be just a lot of dip No two people would react the same. No two of us would do the same thing. You know? One of us would immediately be up on top of that dancing and raising hell. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just having a good time. One would be sitting over here crying in his beer. Hoo, hoo, hoo. World ain't too good right. Two of us would start a fight back in that corner. <laughs> and two over here would be putting the make on each other. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, two of us would act out in behavior wise. And, and do the same thing. But all of us as alcoholics, we would not have but one thing that we would all do. Just one thing that we have in common. All of us would immediately want another drink. See? That's the one thing we have. We would all crave another drink, although we would act different. So, you know, we are abnormal drinkers. And the doctor says the only thing that we suggest is entire absence. And this is all the doctor knew about at that time. And, you know, he didn't know anything about the breakdown of alcohol and the enzymes because they hadn't really talked about that. But nowadays, you know, as we learn, we're learning more and more about the disease of alcoholism and the things that we're learning are, are actually bringing out the doctor's opinion in 1935. You know, what is the normal reaction to alcohol? And, we, and he says that one, and we we'll take the nine people who, who drink normally, and once they take a drink of alcohol, they put it into their system, and the body, the body, reckon, the body produces certain enzymes or chemicals to metabolize alcohol. When alcohol comes into the system, alcohol is a toxic substance. In other words, it can destroy the body. So the body has certain protective enzymes to attack the alcohol in the normal drinker. And he breaks it down to acid aldehydes, down to diacetic acid, down to the acetone level, which is broken up into simple carbohydrates. Then this is broken into 
three, three products, water, sugar, and carbon dioxide. The water is passed off by the body. Uh, the carbon dioxide is, is given off through the lungs, and the sugar is burned up or stored as simple energy by the body. This is a normal way to metabolize alcohol. It takes a, the, the alcoholic, it takes the normal person about an hour to metabolize an ounce of alcohol. Uh, if he drinks any fashion, that will build up and he'll get uh, nauseous and dizzy. And in if most cases, he, uh, he'll go pass out or vomit or do something. You know what I mean? But there's really no problem with these people. Now, let's look at this guy over here that's this. Boy, was I this. Now, this. We put a drink, drink of alcohol into our system. Our body recognizes it, but for some reason yet unknown, our body does not produce enough of these enzymes as we compare these two. We don't produce these in a sufficient quantity or quality like the normal drinker. Just like some people are, are diabetic. They don't produce enough for insulin to break down sugar. The alcoholic doesn't produce enough of defensive chemistries against alcohol. So he breaks the alcohol down to the acid out the has down to the diacetic acid. He gets it down to the acetone level as far as he can go with it at that time. Later on, you know, as he he will metabolize it out, but it stops at this point. And this is the real villain because when this chemistry uh, is made up, which is a byproduct of the alcohol, it gets to gets with certain chemistries in the brain cavities, natural to the brain cavity, and it produces a physical craving for alcohol. You know, once we take a drink, it gets into this chemistry, and immediately we crave the next drink. Now I think, you know, he said this does not occur in the average temper drinker. You know, he says the craving of alcohol is a manifestation of the allergy. It's an abnormal reaction to alcohol. And he says that if these people will never be able to safely use alcohol in any form. We can't safely use alcohol. Now, you know, I, <clears throat> the craving is what gets us. You know, we alcoholics, and I often, I can, I can now that I understand the problem, I can see why, I can look back and see how I was a victim of this thing. And many, many times in my life, I wonder, how did it do? Now I know how it happened. See, I'd get off from work and I'd say, my wife said, I want you to come home and cut the grass. Oh, man, the hell with the grass. You know how we feel, got to cut the damn grass. You know? <laughs> well, okay, she's raised so much hell, so I got to really do it this time. But, you know, everybody knows you can cut the grass better with one drink. <laughs> so we stop in the bar and we have one little innocent drink. Drinks that we see other people sitting in there. These normal social drinkers, they in there having one. What's wrong with me having a drink? So I go in there and have one drink. And uh, I got a visit with my buddy on the bar. So the phenomenal craving can develop, you know. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm visiting there, this phenomenal craving begins to grow from one drink. And the craving starts, see it equals one drink. One drink, one unit of craving. <laughs> but that one, that one drink produces a craving of, 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 of one drink. And the craving says, why don't you have two? Ain't nothing wrong with two. And then go cut the grass. <laughs> but that second drink doubled the craving. Because the craving is, is doubled now. It intensifies. Because if, if the craving comes from alcohol, when I put more alcohol in, the craving is going to build up. So the craving is stronger. And then my mind says, well, don't forget about that grass. And when I say, oh, well, three won't make any difference, then we'll go. So we take three. By this time, you say, man, I really got to cut that grass. <laughs> and the third drink produces, the craving is tripled. And by that time, you know, you take the fourth drink. And your partner say, what did you say about that grass? You said, the hell with the grass. <laughs> <laughs> the more we drink, 
the more alcohol we put into our system, the craving gets stronger with each drink. So really we crave more after the fourth or fifth drink than we did after the very first drink. And the craving becomes beyond our control. We go through the well-known spree. We drink and drink and drink. And we never, we have never, I, I, as an alcoholic, I remember my experience as an alcoholic, I never remember satisfy, satisfying that phenomenon. I have never had enough to drink. I had too much. But I never experienced one time when I said, I got enough that time. I did. <laughs> I never got enough. Now, so, it, and, this, and this will always happen. You know, as, a, as an alcoholic, we know that this will always get worse. Uh, the chem chemical deficiency will never get any better. The older we get, even though we don't drink, the chemical deficiency gets worse. If you got a, a, a deficiency in your system, it will get worse with age, whether you drink or not. Like I say, I haven't had a drink in over 24 years. But if I would take a drink tonight, the craving would be worse because the chemical deficiency is worse. Because I'm older and I produce less of the chemistries and metabolize alcohol than I did 24 years ago. And since there's no known way to treat this, but the doctor is simple. He said, that's simple. If you're allergic to alcohol and every time you take a drink, you crave it. He said, don't take the first drink. <laughs> and you will never experience the craving of alcohol. That's simple. So he said, these people can never drink safely. So because of this side, I can't drink safely. And that way it would be. That's, but now that I understand that part of my problem. Dr. Silkworth says, uh, later on, our book says rather, this is a, we should understand this. Every alcoholic should understand, completely understand his illness. You know, after all, you know, if you if you got to live with this, you need to understand what it is. 